polyether ether ketone is a, is a good example for XPS. It contains benzene rings, oxygen in two different chemical states, and so we can expect to see chemical state information, that is to say chemical shifted peaks in both the oxygen and the carbon high resolution data. So we've loaded a data set that contains measurements from a peak sample where the sample has been etched using an argon cluster source to monitor how the peak evolves as a function of etch time. And we'll do a bit of bookkeeping initially. So what we need to do is have all these measurements that have been saved as VAMAS blocks on the same row for each etch cycle. So that the first job was to set the element transition field for the pars energy 20 spectrum that was a repeat of the carbon 1s uh, and we entered a different element transition field so that it would align as a, as a new column in the right hand side and we're also doing a bit more bookkeeping here where we we are assigning the correct pass energy for the different measurements so the survey was done at 160 the OJ oxygen carbon 1s and valence band at 40 pass energy and one additional carbon 1s at pass energy 20. In the first instance we'll create some regions using the element library so we identify the oxygen and the carbon using the element library and say create peaks and this will create an annotation table to show the initial quantification and then it will have created two regions and these regions are for the oxygen and the carbon and they now appear on the quantification parameters dialog window and using the table uh, the annotation table to give us the concentration we would expect to see about 86 percent for the carbon compared to the oxygen that's because we've got 19 carbon and three oxygen peaks in the polyether ether ketone and this table even after adjusting the, these regions is indicating that we've got a little bit more carbon than the oxygen which may be because the, the initial surface has some contamination on it but when we look at the high resolution data we can see shifted peaks which is encouraging however having measured both the oxygen and the carbon high resolution data this not only shows us the the potential chemical state information it's also showing us that both of these spectra are well formed and so we do not expect to see uh, shifts in peaks due to uh, anomalies in the in the measurement such as differential charging the the peaks that we see are clearly shifted and they're shifted in different directions so there's no systematic uh, uh, sh peak structure that might indicate we've got some problem with the measurement so having decided that our data looks like we are free from artifacts we can now construct a peak model and try and assess the chemical shifts that are associated with what you would see in peak namely a single bonded oxygen and a doubly bonded oxygen so we've created a peak model where there are two main peaks these are the primary peaks from the polyether ether ketone and there are also secondary peaks which are satellite peaks that are associated with the benzene rings so let's set the names so that we can see what we think these peaks ought to be and we've got a single bonded and a doubly bonded carbon peak and they should be in the ratio of two to one and that's because we've got two oxygen peaks bonded within between the benzene rings and one oxygen sing doubly bonded to carbon so let's add an annotation table that gives us information about the offset in these peaks and also the ratio so we're seeing an offset of a, about 2 EV between the primary peaks and we're seeing a ratio of 2 to 1 so that's what we would expect for for the material and then again looking at the carbon 1s you can see there are satellite peaks and then there are the main primary peaks and again the primary peaks ought to be in the ratio of what is expected for polyether ether ketone the carbon 1s also has peak structure that is associated with these benzene rings and satellite peaks 
So we have to account for these in the peak model. And we still should have, even though we have satellite peaks, we ought to have a peak structure within the main primary peaks of this material. Peaks in the ratio of 4 to 1 for the single bonded to the doubly bonded. That's because we've got oxygen that is singly bonded to benzene carbon atoms and there are four that are connected to the oxygen whereas we have a single carbon atom that is doubly bonded to oxygen. And one of the ways that we can manage a table such as this annotation table where we want to see ratio of peaks and offsets from a specific peak is to use the component index on the component property page. The If we set these component indices the order of the table will change depending on the lowest value for the component index. So currently that's the ring, the C1S ring has the lowest component index value of zero and later on we can adjust these values so that we get the order that we'd like to see in terms of ratio and offset. So before we do that let's just set the the constraint for the doubly bonded versus the singly bonded so that we get the expected ratio for at least two of these peaks in this three primary peaks within the, the uh, peak model. So having done that we would now like to see maybe make a, a little adjustment to the line shape to improve the, the fit. But what we'd like to see is how many carbon atoms we think are within the ring structure compared to the singly bonded uh, carbon. And there ought to be 14 within the ring, ring structure not bonded to carbon compared to 4 that are. So we should expect to see a, a ratio of 3.5 for the carbon within the ring compared to the singly bonded oxygen carbon peak. And that's about what we see. A little bit more carbon than you might expect, but that's consistent with the survey spectrum. So now if we look at these two spectra together, the oxygen and the carbon, you can clearly see how peak gives us some valuable information in terms of chemical shifts. And it also shows us that the offset of the doubly bonded to the singly bonded oxygen peak is about 2.